Morning, board members. My name is Genevieve Gale. I'm a policy associate with the Central Valley Air Quality Coalition, or CVAC. And we at CVAC are very excited for the opportunity for AB 617 to address the localized impacts and cumulative impacts to communities that we have not been able to address with the state implementation plans. And CVAC has worked on these SIPs for over a decade, and personally on the PM 2.5 plan for the past year. And so we feel we have a unique perspective on what has and has not worked with the state planning. And personal perspective, I feel we should be looking to the past to inform the decisions we make today. And so speaking to what has worked, I really appreciate the conversation by Veronica and Karen on the need for objective criteria for successful programs. The San Joaquin Valley would not be where it is today without the clear attainment goals, the deadlines, and the enforcement that are embedded in the Federal Clean Air Act. And I feel we should mirror these strengths in 617 with minimum requirements, goals, and strong enforcement so that it will be key to the success of 617. And speaking to what could be improved, I'd like to spend my time focusing on community engagement. Many people in the San Joaquin Valley feel their voices are not heard when it comes to air quality planning. They take the time to come to meetings, they learn the issues, they voice their concerns, but they don't see the way in which their recommendations are incorporated into the plans. And so I wanted to share a model of community-driven planning today that could allow CARB to reimagine what the public process could look like. And this comes from Fresno. It's the Fresno's Transformative Climate Communities Program. Uh, the legislature appropriated seven, 70 million to the Strategic Growth Council to invest in the city of Fresno to create a quote, transformative climate community. And it was an evolution of process, but the city ultimately decided that in order to decide how and where to invest, they utilized a community steering committee. And this committee was made up of everyone who lived, worked, or owned property in the project area. And as long as they showed up to a set number of meetings, they had not only a voice, but they had a vote. And so they were able to propose their own projects. And then staff would connect those projects with organizations that could implement them. And then they provided the technical assistance and modeling information back to the public. So the public could analyze the pros and cons of every project and finally vote on the projects that they wanted to see implemented. So this resulted in an investment plan that truly and directly reflects the needs of the community. And so I think this is a great example to look to and perhaps mirror with 617 with the community emission reduction plans, allowing for transparency of data and giving the community not only a voice but a vote. Thank you. And I could speak for five hours, so <laughs> I'll end it there. Very articulately. Thank you.